the human capacity for moral reasoning has kept pace with the developments in human knowledge and its capacities. We haven't destroyed ourselves yet. But with this era, and the era that we're going into with time control technology and the way it's being played with now and exercised around the world, the gap between the moral reasoning of these governments and our technological capacities has reached a critical point. And I could give you 40 or 50 reasons why governments, I literally could, 40 or 50 reasons why they would not want this to be disclosed. Um, um, but there, it's being kept secret. There are physicists, there are scientists who are very active in that, but as far from the government and the private interest perspective, they will uh, never release it. But in my mind, and as well as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of a lot of physicist friends of mine, the scientific community is split on those on the inside of this. Um, half of us feel probably that transparency is the only way um, that we're going to guide the moral and ethical application of this technology. But art is going to require something that's never been done on this planet before. Um, we're going to have to knock down all the political barriers, all the religious barriers, and to look at this issue as one human race on this planet. It is possible, it, it is very possible to change events. Um, the only thing that would be different, uh, the only thing that would be different than what's commonly understood, a lot of people feel changing events creates paradoxes. What we're seeing um, is paradoxes. Uh, that's a limitation in the way we look at the science um, or the observations we see. The reality is, is that walking through your flower bed and walking back again, you change that. And it's no different than walking through time. When you walk through time, you change. When you walk back, it doesn't erase itself. It doesn't break paradox. You've effectively changed, had a ripple effect that has touched other parts of this reality, which is one dynamic web of information and energy, which means you might have introduced changes that have no effect at all. They're insignificant, minor, completely not observable, or you may have created a ripple effect that could drastically change the course of this planet and human race. Uh, I, I think this technology, and it's not just me, Art, I just happen to be lucky and fortunate to be on your show. Um, this technology, we feel, has exceeded the ability, at this time at least, of, let's call it our leaders, the people who control the technology, to apply moral reasoning to it. Um, we have some very serious questions to answer. What do we do with this knowledge? How do we handle it? Who should have access to it, uh, given its social and personal implications in relation to literally anything, anyone, even the entire planet? I mean, these are just a few of the questions uh, uh, that are raised. And, and we feel that, uh, many of my colleagues feel, that this uh, burden does need to lie on the scientific community. We have to carry a big part of that. Have you sent a human into the past? We have, we have experienced, we have, um, <laughs> and I don't think we're the only one who's done it, and I know this will create a lot of, a lot of stir because I don't want it to be the focus of the show. Uh, I really don't want it to be because transparency and the need for support from your listeners is so important. Um, the, the short answer is yes, we have exposed humans to accelerated and uh, retarded rates of time. Absolutely, yes. It's inside a field. Um, uh, the, the most dramatic part of this is uh, actually the, the excitement or the startup of a, of a time warp field. That's, it's pretty spectacular to see. Um, with regards to the experience of being exposed to accelerated or decelerated time rates, um, the, um, the effect of the people observing the experiment is pretty bland and benign. Um, but we have tremendous, um, amazing... Uh, uh, what I want to say, experience is reported by the people who have been exposed uh, to these fields. Uh, some of them uh, would claim to have very, very spiritual um, uh, experiences. Some of them uh, would report seeing a uh, spectacular phenomenon as they're uh, in that transition period. Uh, all, all range of spectrum, but it, it, it's such a... Um, uh, the human mind is so unusual uh, when it's exposed to something so foreign. Uh, it's hard to interpret that. It's really not our area of expertise, even though we're trying to add that competency now. Kind of the right. human factors of being exposed to uh, time warp fields. All right, let me try this. Um, if you're, and you say you claim you have already done this, had a human in both directions, 
If a human were, let, let's stick with the past for a moment, uh, to, if a human were sent into the past, is that human uh, restricted to staying within the time warp? In other words, once in the past, whether it be a minute or a year or 500 years, can you then walk out of the field and interact with that time that you're now in uh and then and then of course there's the getting back question so um uh, just one clarification uh what i am talking about is time control and i'm being very careful about the words time control versus time travel have we exposed humans to moving them forward and backwards in time yes on a, on a scale that's smaller uh, but we've done it uh, we're not talking about sending a human back 40 50 years but the technology is not so far away from doing that um, what we are talking about is, yes, a person moving backwards in time, being able to step out of the field and to interact. And, and that's what, um, as you mentioned, Dr. Kako had mentioned about closed time-like curves. Um, this is something we've known for a long time. The German mathematician Kurt Gödel in the late 1940s um, uh, wrote, demonstrated on paper how um, the creation of closed time-like curves didn't um, violate the laws of our math and mathematics and physics. Frank Tipler in 1965 wrote uh, a paper about how to create closed time-like curves that has now become the known as a Tipler cylinder. Uh, Dr. Kaku also talked, I believe, about, about cosmic strings um, and time warp fields. These are things that collect closed time-like curves. So time literally are, actually loops back on itself, even into its own past, and it, and it happens at sub-light speed. Uh, so it's one way to travel backwards in time without traveling faster than the speed of light. And when you emerge from that field, um, as a person in the middle of the experiment, yes, you move backwards in time. Yeah. Um, all right, you actually hold patents for what you call a time reactor design. Uh, and, and one more time for me, because I, I'm trying to understand this. Um, you, you talk about frame dragging uh, as a source of energy. So... The machinery, the, the actual machinery, I, I know I'm going to run into trouble here because you're not going to want to answer these questions, but you, you said electromagnetic fields are created. Are you using a s relatively small amounts of energy to access all of this, or does it take a considerable amount of energy? That's uh, actually, um, it, relatively speaking, it's a very small amount of energy. It might be considered to be uh, on, a, on a pretty moderate to large scale based upon typical usage of power. 